One of the things that you both get into is actually something that I think is really important, the whole clarity piece behind what does social emotional learning actually mean? So could Jess, could you talk about that a little bit? What does social emotional learning actually mean? The common definition that we like to use, and it's adapted from CASL.org, and CASL.org has 30 plus years of research around the science um, of social emotional learning. Um, they've been doing this before it was the sexy thing to do. Okay, so we really appreciate their work, but we've adapted their definition and this, this helps us kind of process, well, what is this gonna look like? Um, and the definition is that in a relationship between emotions and behavior and behaviors and emotions and our ability to dig into our SEL toolkit and respond to our emotions and behaviors and vice versa so we could access school and life. And, and we use that definition. And, and when you said clarity, that is the number one thing we talk about before you go out to your schools and start saying, now we're gonna do SEL and here's what it is. You need to have clarity and what is that common language? What is that common definition that we're gonna use? And then we could build on that together. Yeah, that's part of the problem, isn't it, too, that it's going to become the buzz phrase, the buzz acronym, like social emotional learning. And one of the things that I know that I've often gotten in that in that pushback with comments from from either it's readers or people tweeting or, you know, the thousands of ways they can get in contact with us is um, the fact that ah, we're too soft. This is just another way that, you know, we're too soft in the United States. We need to be able to kids need to be tougher. How is social emotional learning not just about making kids soft? Why is that whole philosophy wrong right there with that pushback? Well, one of the one of the things that we like to do is uh, kind of flip the narrative on them and kind of say, so what are the behaviors you guys are seeing? So what, what are, you know, what are these students exhibiting? And, you know, or as a, as a leader, what are my teachers complaining to me about most? Um, and, and to just sit back and let them, let them use that as a therapy session and just start unraveling this, 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 this. And then to flip that script to say, okay, you're seeing this because a student's lacking this SEL skill. You're seeing this because they're lacking this SEL skill. And we're really, really good at doing that when, oh, okay, the student's a non-fluent reader. Oh, okay, they need valve blends and diagraphs to get them back on track reading. But when we have a student who struggles behaviorally, it's usually met with frustration and anger, not you know seeing a student lacking a specific skill. And so what we wanted to do is provide a, that, that practical way where you know the same way we would say numbers and operations is the big common core bubble, and then within that, we have multiplying fractions as a skill that's part of numbers and operations. So the same where it's like, oh, okay, the student's lacking social awareness, which would be the big overarching SEL competency could be, you know, based on these behaviors, the student's lacking the ability to see another's point of view. So then, okay, that would be a sub skill of perspective taking. And so then to provide them, here's some practical tools that we can use to teach students how to see other people's point of view or perspective taking. So and to it, make it practical, sorry. And, and no, no, just to add to that, um, there's, there's an abundance of research that has demonstrated those exclusionary practices of we're the tough, we're going to make you tough and we're going to teach you does not work. And in fact, uh, there's a disproportionality around that kind of work for students with disabilities and students of color. And this has been going on for years. So it does not work. We already have evidence that that does not work. So we really need to take a look at, well, what does? And we're not making kids soft. We're building uh, their agency, their capacity to understand their emotions and behavior so that they can respond when they're faced with adverse situations and um, and respond appropriately. That's what we're, we're actually trying to make them stronger, not not weaker when it comes when it comes to that argument.